Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have 1 over 1 plus cosine squared x plus 1 over 1 plus sine squared x equals 48 over 35. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first method. So for my first method I'm going to be using the double angle formula for cosine. Remember, there are three formulas for cosine 2x, and I'll be using the two, two of them. So one of them is going to be cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And from here, you can basically isolate cosine squared x and write it as 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. Now, this formula is super duper helpful because we also use it to evaluate integrals of even powers of sine and cosine. I also made videos on those. If you're interested, you can go ahead and take a look at some of these videos. Great, let's go ahead and do the same thing for sine squared. That's going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And from here, sine squared x can be written as 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2. Great. So let's go ahead and substitute these into the equations and we're going to simplify the fraction on the left hand side and we're going to be solving for cosine of 2x. So that's the plan. All right, let's see how this plays out. So this gives us 1 over 1 plus cosine of uh, cosine squared of x, which is going to be 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 and then plus 1 over 1 plus 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. So we can go ahead and um, multiply the top and the bottom on the left hand side by 2. That gives us uh, 2 divided by 2 plus 1 plus cosine of 2x. 2 divided by 2 plus 1 minus cosine of 2x. And this is kind of nice because we're going to be getting the difference of two squares from here, uh, which is easily simplified. 2 over 3 plus cosine of 2x plus 2 over 3 minus cosine of 2x. And when we make a common denominator, we do get we do get uh, 0 in the denominator, uh, not 0, uh, the cosine cancels out. We end up with uh, 2 times uh, 3 plus 3, which is 12, 2 times 6 in other words. 12 divided by, and the bottom is going to be 9 minus cosine squared 2x equals 48 over 35. So now we can go ahead and cross cancel this or simplify this a little bit. Uh, 12 goes into 48 four times. And then if you go ahead and cross multiply here, this is a 1, we get 36 minus 4 cosine squared 2x equals 35. And from here, you know, 4 cosine squared x, this must be 1 because 36 minus 1 equals 35. So this gives us cosine squared 2x equals, or 4 cosine squared x equals, 4 cosine squared 2x equals 1, which means cosine squared 2x equals 1 fourth. And obviously, this has two results. Uh, one of them is going to be positive. So we can say that, okay, cosine 2x equals 1 half or cosine 2x equals negative 1 half. Let's go ahead and work this out. As you know, uh, we set 1 half equal to the cosine of the smallest angle between 0 and 2 pi. And that is going to be cosine of 60 degrees or pi over 3. So we can write this as cosine of pi over 3. And from here, we can now compare 2x and pi over 3 and find the solutions. So it's going to be like 2x equals pi over 3 plus 2n pi. And if you divide both sides by 2, we're going to get x equals pi over 6 plus n pi. So it's going to give us a set of solutions. If you want the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, you can kind of replace n with 0, n with 1, so on and so forth. All right, great. So that gives us basically a set of solutions. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. So we also have cosine of 2x equals negative 1 half. Now to find the angle whose cosine is negative 1 half, we kind of have to reflect the angle uh, over the y-axis uh, or just subtract pi over 3 from pi. And that's going to give us 2 pi over 3 
And again, of course, one thing we forgot here with the first set of solutions, we could also say 2x could equal um, 5 pi over 3, right? Plus 2 and 2k pi. And from here we get pi, 5 pi over 6 plus k pi. That's another set of solutions because cosine is an even function. If you negate it, uh, you're going to get the same cosine if you negate the angle. So from here, we should be getting something like this. 2x is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus, you know, something like 2m pi. And x equals pi over 3 plus m pi. And also, 2x can equal 2 pi minus that. So that's going to be 4 pi over 3 plus, let's say, 2, uh, I don't know. Uh, which variable should we use? Maybe uh, n pi did we use n? Yeah. KLMNPQR. I don't know. Let's just uh, use R. 2R pi and then X is going to be 2 pi over 3 plus R pi. So it basically gives us the solution sets. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and see how we can compare those. And I'm also going to be showing you the graph of it so you'll see the solutions all together. So with the second method, I'm just going to make a common denominator. I don't care about the double angle. If I do make a common denominator, I get 1 plus sine squared plus 1 plus cosine squared. And then that is multiplied, I mean that's divided by their product. And this is equal to 48 over 35. And then, remember sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Great. So this gives us 3 over 1 plus sine squared times 1 plus cosine squared. But here's one thing I can do. I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Because I want to solve this equation for cosine. And I can do that. And now we can go ahead and cross cancel. This becomes a 16. And now here we get the following. If you cross multiply, you're going to get 16 times 2 minus cosine squared x times 1 plus cosine squared x equals 35. And now we can replace cosine squared with something. How about calling it y? And don't ask y. We get 16 times 2 minus y times 1 plus y equals 35. And this gives us the following. We're going to get 2 from here, but that's going to be 32. And we're going to get 2y minus y, which is y basically. So that's going to give us 16y. And then we're going to get minus y squared minus 16y squared equals 35. Now, if you put everything on the right-hand side, we get 16y squared minus 16y plus 3 is equal to 0. And this is factorable. Isn't that cool? You know there's an x method. You can multiply this, 40, uh, 48, and then you put that here. You put the negative 16 here. Find two numbers whose product is this and that, so on and so forth. To keep a long story short, this can be factored as 4y minus 3 and 4y plus 1. And this gives us really cool results. So y is going to be from the first one, 3 fourths. But remember, y is, y is cosine squared. So cosine squared equals 3 fourths implies two things. Either cosine x is equal to root 3 over 2 or cosine x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. And obviously, if you just keep... Uh, doing this, you're going to get the same solutions as before, so I'm not going to repeat them. Or uh, you get y equals negative one-fourth, right? But unfortunately, when you set it equal to cosine squared, you don't get a real solution because no square, no real number squared can be negative. All right? And I think uh, we made a mistake here. Okay, there, never mind. This is supposed to be a minus, and I just realized because we were supposed to get a bunch of other solutions. So it's going to be a minus sign, and we get y equals 1 fourth, and that is equal to cosine squared. And from here, we get cosine x equals 1 half, and cosine x equals negative 1 half. Great. And it's going to give us pretty much the same solutions. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see how we can wrap this up. So I just graphed y equals 1 over 1 plus cosine squared plus 1 over 1, 1 plus sine squared. And the horizontal line y equals 48 over 35. And as you can see, uh, between 0 and 2 pi inclusive, uh, there's quite a few uh, intersection points, which are all solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. 
Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.